So thank you for this opportunity to present some of the work that we've been performing on bacterial epigenomics using long read sequencing technologies. In particular, this is an example of the utilization of smart sequencing to evaluate the functional relevance of novel bacterial methyl transferases applied to a key human pathogen, Clostridioides difficile. So C. difficile is a spore-forming gram-positive anaerobic bacillus found ubiquitously in the environment and GI tracts of humans and animals. Its transmission occurs primarily via spores through the oral fecal route and can cause severe systemic infections not only in immunocompromised individuals, but also elderly, antibiotic-exposed ones, and those in intensive care units. It is considered to be a common hospital-acquired infection with more than 250,000 infections per year, resulting in roughly 14,000 deaths, and more than 1 billion US dollars in healthcare costs per year. In this project, we performed the first comprehensive characterization of the DNA methylation landscape of C. difficile across a diverse collection of clinical isolates, with the purpose of better understanding the functional role of metal transferases and corresponding methylation landscape in the sporulation process of C. difficile, which is the main route of transmission to human hosts, and eventually beyond sporulation. We used for this 36 uh, clonal isolates from infected fecal samples obtained within the frame of an ongoing pathogen surveillance program at Mount Sinai Hospital. And our strategy involved very briefly a multi-scale analysis of uh, metalone profiles, mutation complementation analysis, transcriptomic analysis, and comparative genomics and epigenomics. Uh, through smart sequencing, we found a total of 17 unique high-quality uh, methylation motifs across our genomes, the large majority of them being of 6MA type. And interestingly, one of these motifs, CA5, was consistently present across all of our isolates, as well as in the several hundreds of global C. difficile isolates that were found in GeneBank. Consistent with the presence of a highly conserved CA5 motive, we also identified a type 2 6MA solitary DNA methyl transferase present across our isolates, which was responsible for methylation at this motive, and which we called CAMA. So here I show the effects of the Delta CAMA mutation in the mouse model. Mice were uh, used to test each of the three genotypes, wild type, Delta CAMA, and Delta CAMA C, the complementation of Delta CAMA with the wild type mutant. And we found CFU levels to decrease steadily from day two post inoculation to day seven. Notably, the Delta CAMA mutant showed uh, CFU levels 10 to 100 times um, lower than those observed in the wild type and complement strains. And please note that this is a log scale. The bacteria were cleared from the feces roughly six days uh, post inoculation for the MTase mutant, while they were still detectable at day six and seven for the wild type and complement strains. Taken together, these findings suggest that C5 methylation events play an important role in C. difficile's ability to persist within the host intestinal tract. And this prompted us to perform a comprehensive methylome and transcriptome analysis of the wild type and MTase mutant strains. So C. difficile has an average number of around 7,700 C5 methylation motives per genome. To inquire if specific chromosomal regions are enriched or depleted for this motive, we used a multi-scale signal representation approach based on wavelet transformation. Briefly, in black, we have the distribution of CA5 across the leading and lagging strands of the genome, and in red and in blue, we have regions with a statistically significant over or under representation of motives, respectively. We found a CA5 motives uh, to be enriched in genes related to sporulation, which makes sense, uh, but also membrane transport, transcription regulation, and cell wall proteins. To further characterize CA5 motive sites, we performed whole genome alignment with MOVE and classified each motive position in the alignment as either conserved or autologous, devoid of SNPs or indels, here shown in blue, variable autologous, in which at least one genome contains a SNP or indel, here shown in green, and non-autologous, shown in orange, uh, typically arising by insertion of mobile genetic elements. We found the majority of motive positions, 75.4% to be autologous conserved. 
but still almost 14% of them were variable orthologs. And these variable ones are interesting in the sense that they correspond to positions of methylation abrogation or on-off methylation switching mediated by genomic variation. Apart from on-off switching of DNA methylation mediated by genetic instability, the former can also arise through competitive binding between DNA methyltransferases and other DNA binding proteins, such as transcription factors. To test this, we built on the rich collection of C. difficile methylomes and perform a systematic detection and analysis of non-methylated CA5 sites. This is exactly what is shown here on this uh, upper figure, the landscape of non-methylated motive sites across the C. difficile genome, which were found dispersed throughout the full length of it, yet with a minor percentage of positions given by these uh, major peaks to be remaining non-methylated in at least one-third of the isolates, suggesting that competitive protein binding is expected to be more active in certain genomic regions. We next uh, queried our genomes for all currently known transcription factor binding sites of C. difficile and found overlaps between prominent peaks of non-methylated C5 positions and the TFBSs of uh, COD Y and ZIL R. We have here the example of ZIL R. And similar results were obtained when uh, overlapping non methylated C5 positions and transcription salt sites. Uh, so, um, altogether, this shows that epigenetic regulation at C5 sites is mediated both by small genetic expansions and contractions as well as compet competition with regulatory proteins. To study the functional significance of methylation at CA5 sites, we used RNA-seq to compare the transcriptomes of wild-type C. difficile with that of the knockout mutant delta cam A, both in liquid media in exponential and stationary growth stages, and in solid media, um, 9 and 10.5 hours post-correlation induction. Of the almost 4,000 uh, genes annotated in C. difficile, 1 to 9%, depending on the growth stage, were differentially expressed at 5% FDR, with effect sizes ranging between 13-fold for underexpressed and 80-fold for overexpressed genes. And the set of DE genes was enriched for the sporulation gene ontology GO term, which makes sense, as well as uh, some additional terms, flagellum, ATP-coupled uh, transport, UMP uh, biosynthesis, which goes in line with previous CA5 distribution analysis. Finally, we attempted to explore the RNA-seq data further beyond the sporulation phenotype and the GOTHERM analysis discussed above, with a special focus on biological processes critical to C. difficile infection. Specifically, we performed an overlap analysis between the list of D genes from our RNA-seq data, wild type versus delta cam A mutant, four different time points, and those from published studies focusing on the colonization and infection by this pathogen. Shown here is one of those examples where we have our four data points uh, shown in dark blue and those of another study in green focusing on conditions that potentiate biofilm formation. The outer layer of the shell plot highlights the number of common genes between pairwise comparisons across the two studies and its color uh, is related to statistical significance. And indeed we found multiple significant overlaps between our data set, particularly at sporulation phases with differentially expressed genes in conditions favoring the production of biofilm on a solid substrate. We tested this experimentally by crystal violet staining of growth supernatants of the three genotypes, and indeed we found the mTase mutant to produce more biofilm compared to both wild type and complemented strains. So the take home message uh, is that SMAS sequencing has been and continues to be a catalyst for the bacterial epigenomics field. I bring you here an example of the smart sequencing potential. CAMA, which is a 6MA solitary methyl transferase that impacts sporulation, biofilm formation, and colonization of C. difficile. And future work will delve into uh, other bacterial persistent methyl transferases and methylomes uh, to better understand not only their functional roles, but also their interplay with certain mobile genetic elements and effect on DNA structure. So uh, the paper containing these and other results has uh, recently been published on uh, Nature Microbiology. Please go ahead and check it out. And I would like to finish by acknowledging uh, the people from Fang Lab at Mount Sinai School of Medicine, at uh, Tufts University, University of uh, North Carolina, the Pathogen Surveillance Program at Mount Sinai School of Medicine, CNRS, uh, Richard Roberts at New England Biolabs, 
and of course the multiple sources of funding. Uh, thank you very much for your attention and I'm open to questions.